If you've got your eye on a Toyota 4Runner or Jeep Grand Cherokee, you might be wondering things like which machine is biggest and by how much, which one hits your wallet the hardest at the gas pumps and by how much. Are there any surprises when comparing spaciousness and fuel costs between these two? And which one is the better choice for your hard-earned purchase dollars and gas dollars? I've crunched a lot of numbers you're going to want to see, and I'll be leaving you with a few pointers and tips to help make sure you're shopping out a healthy second-hand unit if you're going in that direction. These 4x4s are two fan favorites. The fifth generation 4Runner launched for model year 2010 and concludes for model year 2024 as a new sixth generation machine comes online for model year 2025. During its 15 year run, this generation 4Runner saw very few major changes to platform and powertrain. It's old school, it works, they've left it alone, and shoppers love it. My favorite 4Runner is the TRD Pro. I'll be showing you some footage of this one, especially its specialized suspension system featuring Fox shocks, which are specially designed to deliver a smooth, controlled ride and plenty of suspension travel with incredible body motion control, even during severely rough driving. I'd happily tell you this is the most comfortable ride I've ever had in an SUV on very rough roads. It really is like floating on a cloud. The fourth generation Grand Cherokee arrived for model year 2011 and concluded for model year 2022. That's a solid 11 year run on this platform. For both machines, buying a recent used model can be done with relative confidence since you're getting not only a proven platform that each automaker has been manufacturing for well over a decade, but also a range of engines with a similar level of proven mass production experience. The 4Runner gets a 4.0-liter V6 with 270 horsepower and 278 pounds of torque, as well as a very old-school 5-speed automatic. Towing capacity here is 5,000 pounds. In the Grand Cherokee, it's the 3.6-liter Pentastar V6 with 293 horsepower and 260 pounds of torque, an 8-speed automatic, and towing capacity of 6,200 pounds. Go with the 5.7-liter Hemi V8 and make it 360 horsepower, 390 pounds of torque, and a towing capacity of 7,200 pounds. Both of these engine choices represent some of the most mass-produced engines on the road today anywhere, and while anecdotal, years of researching used cars has shown me that typically vehicles with powertrains backed by long production cycles, like the 4Runner and Grand Cherokee, tend to become more and more reliable the longer they've been in production, as updates roll out and bugs get ironed out. So that's the key specs covered, now let's see how these machines compare on physical size, spaciousness, and cargo volume. These two are remarkably close on physical dimensions, with very similar specs for length, width, and ground clearance, differing by only about half an inch. However, there are some subtle distinctions. The 4Runner stands 2.2 inches or 5.6 centimeters taller than the Grand Cherokee, and the Grand Cherokee boasts a 5 inch or 12.5 centimeter advantage in wheelbase over the 4Runner. So these two are basically neck and neck in terms of size, and given this fact, there are some interesting differences when it comes to measurements on board. For instance, the Grand Cherokee leads by a little over half an inch, or 1.5 centimeters, in terms of front and rear headroom versus the 4Runner. But when it comes to legroom, the 4Runner takes the lead by a more significant margin, boasting a 1.4 inch, or 3.6 centimeter advantage for front seat occupants. When it comes to shoulder room, your wider occupants will appreciate the Grand Cherokee's slightly more generous dimensions. Both seating rows offer marginally more space here than the 4Runner, though the difference between the two machines is less than an inch, or 2.5 centimeters. Despite being tied for length, the Grand Cherokee boasts a 5-inch or 12.7 centimeter advantage in wheelbase, meaning its front and rear axles are positioned 5 inches further away from each other than the 4Runner's. That contributes to the Grand Cherokee's superior rear seat legroom, which surpasses the 4Runner's by 5.7 inches or 14 and a half centimeters. That is a significant 17% advantage in rear seat legroom for the Grand Cherokee, and that figure stands out as one of the most substantial differences in physical dimensions between these two machines. But it's not the biggest difference, that's cargo capacity. The Grand Cherokee has 36.3 cubic feet with the seats up, but the 4Runner makes it up to 47.2. That's 23% more seats up cargo capacity in the 4Runner, and with the seats folded, you've got 68.3 cubic feet of space in the Grand Cherokee, but 89.7 in the 4Runner, meaning the Toyota has a 24% advantage here. So go with the 4Runner and its 23% more cargo volume with the seats up, and 24% more cargo volume with the seats down, compared to the Grand Cherokee. I've run some numbers to help you see the difference in fuel economy between your three engine choices in this comparison, right down to dollars and cents. The 4.0-liter V6 in the 4Runner needs 13.8 liters of gas to drive 100 kilometers on average. 
the 3.6 liter V6 in the Grand Cherokee needs 11.3 liters of gas to drive that same distance. And if you go with the 5.7 liter Hemi V8, then it's 14.1 liters of gas to drive 100 kilometers. In miles per gallon, that's about 27 for the 4Runner, 34 for the V6 Grand Cherokee, and 27 for the Grand Cherokee Hemi. So the Grand Cherokee with V6 engine is the most fuel efficient option in this comparison, with the Grand Cherokee Hemi and Toyota 4Runner virtually tied for fuel consumption. That's the Hemi giving you 33% more horsepower, 40% more torque, and 44% more towing capacity for roughly the same gas dollars. Specifically, assuming you pay $1.50 for a liter of gas and drive 25,000 kilometers per year, then the 4Runner's annual gas bill works out to $5,175, that's $430 a month. With the Grand Cherokee V6, it's $4,240 per year, or $350 per month instead. So that's $940 per year, or $80 per month less, into the gas tank of the Grand Cherokee with the V6 engine. Go with the Hemi, and your gas bill looks just like the 4Runners. Call it $5,200 per year, give or take $100. Bucks. These two are technically a tie. Depending on your budget, you should have no trouble finding either one of these machines in nearly new condition with plenty of remaining warranty, and plenty of add-on warranty coverage available if you'd like to go that route. But two things to remember here. First, before you buy an extended warranty package, consider putting that money into your savings account instead. That way it's available if a repair is needed, and also you get to keep it if one isn't. Second, you don't need to buy extended warranty packages on the spot. Don't be pressured. Take the documentation away with you and study it carefully. You can head to each manufacturer's website site to see which, if any, recall notices apply to the model you're considering, and then contact your dealership to determine whether or not those recalls have been performed. This is done free of charge to make your vehicle safer, and be sure to contact Jeep or Toyota Customer Care to register as the new owner of a second-hand vehicle. This ensures that future recall notices make their way to you in a timely fashion. If the 4Runner or Grand Cherokee you're buying is a little on the older side, or has done a lot of miles, then starting ownership with a fresh battery and healthy, tested charging system can be a great way to fend off potential headaches with electronics. And avoiding a model that's ever been modified with non-factory parts or software by a previous owner is a really good idea for the average shopper to avoid potential warranty-related complications. You want to stick to stock to avoid potential surprises unless you're sure you know what you're doing. The Kinetic Dynamic Suspension System, or KDSS, on the 4Runner should be checked for proper operation if equipped. Take note of any warning or malfunction lights referencing this system, and note that more than a handful of owners have reported problems with rusting components causing trouble. And if in doubt, have a technician inspect this advanced suspension feature before you buy. Elsewhere, some owners also complain of premature hatchback rust and loose or rattly front seats. Most do not. This machine has earned itself a reputation as a solid bet, and the resale values show show it. If I was buying a Grand Cherokee in this generation, I'd be sticking with stock, skipping the optional air suspension and sunroof to avoid problems reported by a moderate number of owners, and I'd also be paying close attention to the transmission on my test drive, looking for any signs of shuddering, slamming, or slipping which require further attention, probably in the form of a software update. Please consider leaving a like if you're watching on YouTube and subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any more videos like this one. From Sudbury, Ontario, I'm Justin Pritchard, and we'll see you in the next video.